Hey, hi all. Welcome back to BRI Knowledge Center. And in today's session, we'll talk about partial classes and uh, partial methods in C Sharp. So uh, a partial class is a special feature of C Sharp, right? It provides a special ability to implement the functionality of a single class into a multiple classes, okay? That means if you look at this C Sharp code here, right? So instead of like defining uh, everything in the single class, so let me tell you one example. So I'm just going to define class A, right? And I want to define same class A. Is it possible? No, it is going to throw you an exception saying that the namespace already having A class and you should not be able to create same class. So I want to create a different, I want to create same class, right? Uh, for the reusability or for to share or you know, uh, uh, give it for other person to write some logic uh, parallelly uh, while I'm doing it in the same class. So I'll go for defining partial. So that means if I put a partial keyword here, it is possible to create a classes with the same name. Okay. So a partial class is a special feature of C sharp. It provides a special ability to implement the functionality of a single class into multiple files or multiple sections here. Okay, so at the runtime, it is going to merge two into single class, right? Here, I'm going to define, right, one method called public wide display message. And inside of this, I'm going to write it, right line off, right? Uh, can I say like, uh, calling from partial, right? One, partial one, or EA calling from class A partial one. Let's give some different name to differentiate. And I'm going to define another method here. This is going to call from partial two, right? I'm going to give this as a different method because it should not give them the same name, okay? And coming here, I'm going to create object for only a class because at runtime it will match both into single class. When you say a partial, right, it will match into single class at the runtime. When I say this, right, now you'll see it is going to invoke this method and it is going to invoke this method. Thing is, once after match this, right, it becomes, right, single class and add these all methods into that single class. Okay, can you see now how it is happening? If you run this, you'll see one is the first one is you call one message one. It is called a partial two class, and second it is called from partial one class, right? So thing is, at runtime these two are going to be right created as you know public class A, and under this it is going to copy these methods. This is how it is going to happen, right? This is how it is going to happen at runtime. Okay, same thing can be specified in adding different files here. One is in the one file called class one, and this one is in class two. Then at main function, when you copy and when you create an object, right, it is going to match all two file files or classes into a single class. And this way it is going to add all methods into single class. This will be created at runtime. You, if you are defining a class as partial, these classes can be matched into single class, okay? So with the help of partial classes, multiple developers can work simultaneously in the same class in different filters, okay? So a partial class is a special feature in C Sharp, okay? So it provides the ability, right? It provides ability, right? to implement the functionality, right? Functionality of single class into multiple classes or files, right? Are combined into single file at runtime. To create partial classes, we have to use partial keyword. So 
So I think I already explained the demo, right? Using this, we have different advantages. With the help of, right, transfer classes, right? So multiple developers can work on simultaneously, can work simultaneously in the same class, right, in different files. And the, with the help of partial class concept, you can split, right? You can split the UI of the design code and the business logic, right? Code to read and understand the code very uh, better way, okay? You can split the UI and business and design code and business logic into different files and become a, a very easy for to understand the code. And also when you're working with automatically, uh, you know, it generated code, the code can be added to the class without having to recreate this host file, okay? So you can also maintain your application in an efficient manner, compressing large classes into small ones, right? You can also, right? maintain the uh, application in an efficient manner by compressing large classes into right small ones so these are some advantages if you use partial classes okay syntaxes public partial class, class name. Okay, now coming to the partial method. What is a partial method is going to do? Okay, so partial method is nothing but, right? Again, it is going to start with the partial keyboard. Okay, these are always defining instead of partial classes. So partial classes can contain a method that's split into two separate CS files, right? One file is having a signature and the definition, right? Another file is having a template, right? So one of the two CS files must contain a signature of the method. That is one, one, one file is having signature, another file is going to have implementation part. So both the declaration and implementation of a method must have a partial keyword. Okay, so let me tell you, right, the definition of partial method, right? Partial classes, right, can contain, partial classes can contain a method, right, that's split into two separate CS files of the partial class, right? One of the two CS files, right? Must contain a signature, right? Of the method and other file, right? Can contain an implementation of a method. Here, yeah. so example, right? So I have a class called, right? Employee, public. I think let's do this and we'll just show for more clarity, right? Uh, I'm going to remove this stuff, right? So I'm going to define a class called public partial employee, right? Happen. Oh, so you have to have a namespace also. This, this. Let me remove this. A public, a partial. Oh, sorry. 
and I must need a public partial class. Okay. And here I'm going to have a constructor, right? Public employee, right? Instead of my constructor, right? I'll do some mechanism, right? And then I have a field called, right? Int EMP ID, right? And public string, right? EMP name. Okay. So here I'm going to define my partial method, right? Partial void generate, right? Employee ID. This is my method I defined here, right? Instead of my constructor, right? I'm going to invoke generate employee ID. So, and another way, right? And another class, another public uh, partial class, right? Which is again employee in here, right? I'm going to have the implementation part of generate employee ID, right? Here, I'm just setting this dot EMP ID equal to, right, some random number. This requires some, okay. As you do, the number, what it's, what it is showing here, and I say random, what it's saying, uh, mm-hmm. So potential basis. Okay. Random. Okay. Um. Do one thing, we'll assign our value here, okay. And come, this is something a first partial class is having some definite, I mean, declaration part of my method this is the partial method, right? And another file is or another class is having implementation part. So now, when I'm going to create an object for employee, right? OB is equal to new of employee dot EMP ID equal to, and I say this way. So what will happen? It will assign the employee ID, right? But here already I assigned it. Now, instead of that, I'm going to just print this console dot right line of right EMP dot or sorry, OBJ dot EMP ID. So when I'm creating this inst instance, it by default calling this constructor and by default it is calling this method. And this method is having this implementation, right? When you run this, you will get employee ID get printed triple one. Okay. So what I'm trying to explain it here is partial class again defining in two files similar way. Partial method also going to be defined in the two files. First file should have a signature declaration, and second file must have the implementation part. Right. And again, I'm telling this partial method won't return any value. It always having white and should not have any access specifier. It is always private. Okay, these are some rules, right? Partial classes can contain a method that's split into two separate files. That's what we have discussed, right? But as part of this, right, these are some rules. It should not have any access specifier by default is a private and should not return any value. And by default it is wide. Okay, clear? Right? So statement of partial method must be same in both partial classes. Signature should be, if I'm giving this uh, way here, I'm defining it here means implementation also should have same signature. Clear? Yeah. This is all about a partial classes and partial method, right? So one thing is like partial classes are, you know, uh, giving provision for developers to do a simultaneously a same, right? A work in different files. And after that, they will merge into a single file and uh, the dot net runtime itself will merge into a single class right that way you are going to separate the development and maintain the code right in 
uh, different layers, which will uh, have a sort of efficient manner of you know, compressing your large complex projects into small, small ones. Okay. Thanks for listening to this video and please subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.